Ahoy, and welcome to the Charlie Etc. YouTube channel. Uh, and today's another video. Bada bing, bada boom, baby. Mm -hmm. uh, this room sounds very big. I don't like that. I'm going to turn my body this way so that the sound is warmer. Hello. You know, the world is getting more and more intentional about style, and I'm just getting more and more intentional about looking like a history professor. And that's okay. Okay, today's topic. Ah, uh, let's see. What did I say? On September 16th of 1922, the New York Times had a message spread across it, which said, City has wild night of straw hat riots. Now, I'm gonna go out on a, a wild limb here and, uh, say that you have not heard of straw hat riots. Maybe you have. Maybe you're, you're an avid American history fan, you have heard of straw hat riots. But I'm gonna make a guess and, uh, say that you probably have not. So let's go back to the beginning. Come on along with me and let's figure this out. For a long time as humans, we've been saying this thing where we're like, don't wear white pants after Labor Day. And in a very similar way, uh, you're not meant to wear straw hats after September 15th, AKA straw hat day. Here's the thing, we don't know why, don't know why and don't know why this is. Nobody concretely knows why Labor Day is the white pants thing and September 15th is the straw hat thing. We just don't know. We don't. But here's what I've found. In 1869 in the Port Arthur News, throughout the whole month of September, uh, there was an ad running which said that they just restocked straw hats and that they were ready to go for the season. And on September 4th, 1873, the Wheeling Daily Register said, hey, We've got straw hat styles for fall in for you, consumers. Nine days later, the Daily Dispatch said, Off with straw hats. On with fall hats. And this is the first time that I could find in the Library of Congress that someone says, Yeah, we aren't doing straw hats for fall this year. Though for a few years after this, there were still advertisements published that said that fall hats would be coming in straw. Though for 1882, the Memphis Public Ledger said that the streets are full of signs that autumn is upon us, straw hats are falling into decline, white hats are falling into a decline, white pants bear the marks of many washings, and Kimball Graphic of South Dakota noted that the leaves are falling, straw hats are disappearing, the geese are beginning to arrive. And the Maryland Independent said in its local brevities section, uh, straw hats are disappearing. Fall cleaning is now in order. So by around 1890, it seems pretty well known that straw hats don't stick around for fall. My best theory as to why this is is just because it promotes uh, felt hat sales toward fall and winter months, and this helps milliners in a time when uh, boaters and panamas were, you know, a little bit popular. Little bit. Okay, let's get to the battles and the tumbles. In March of 1911 in Washington, D.C., a young man wore a brand new straw hat a little bit too early in the year. Multiple pedestrians surrounded him, and what was called a small-sized riot broke out. Subsequently, the hat was done in. After this, we move on to a new era of straw hat riots, ones close to New York. I'm just gonna report on a few of these, but, like, straw hat riots were a thing. Like, this, this happened. And not only once, but a, a whole lot of times. Like, a lot of times. So September 18th, 1912, Bridge to New Jersey. Uh, no causes listed, just what we know is that policemen were unsuccessful in stopping the riot and so had to call firemen to come and hose down the rioters until they stopped. From this it may sound like it was just a few guys who were really hanging in there, but uh, no. Hundreds of hats were destroyed, many men came away bruised and even hospitalized. By April 1913, straw hat riots were such a part of culture that people were even making cartoons about them. And in New York in 1913, uh, some men wore their straw hats a little bit too early, and it got so bad that three even had to escape by taxi. Here's a pretty substantial one for you. Let me talk about September 16th, 1919 in New York City. Our story starts with about 200 men in the streets fighting over straw hats. Four police stations were notified as stones and other objects were volleyed across the street back and forth. As Corporal Amamata Hayes was the original hat wearer, he was kicked in the streets and beaten against a wall until he shot in self-defense and killed Ephraim Gaithers. Samuel Battle and another police officer came along to help, but the fighting was only dissolved when three more precincts appeared. A few days early, September 6th of 1922, uh, in Omaha, 
a hat feud of about 12 boys started a school year off for Central High School. Okay, now, now we're getting to the, the big guy here. September 16th, 1922, New York City. If you go and you Google straw hat riots, this is the one that it'll give you. It'll say, on this day in history, September 16th, 1922, New York, New York, straw hat riots. And they'll say, this is the straw hat riot. This is the one that happened. But what we've learned in this experience, this is not the straw hat riot. This is a straw hat riot. They happened before this, they happened after this. So just keep that in mind, but it's not really super unfair to call it the Straw Hat Riot because it's big, like very, very, very big, like really big. This is a big old, big riot here. This hat riot started with young men and then eventually moved to more. With these younger men, it, it was kind of like a little bit of a prank. They were like, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna get all those silly boys out there that are wearing their straw hats uh, past September 15th. But here's the thing, it was not even September 15th yet. They started September 13th and ran to the 16th. That's, count them, one, two, three days of riots. Yeah, three. A preferred tool of these boys was a, a lovely board with a, uh, a long nail through the top. And, uh, you know, groups of 10 or 12 boys would wait in doorways and try and ambush one or two men wearing straw hats. So let's uh, picture this for a second. Let's just give it give it a little peek. We've got a little doorway and uh, 10 or 12 boys with long nails on sticks are hiding in there. You walk by having a pleasant afternoon with your friend, both wearing your, your, your very nice boaters, brand new. And, uh, you know, all 12 of these boys hop out and beat you down with their nails on sticks. So that's a good day. Further effects, uh, groups of men started fires and blocked the Manhattan Bridge. Some men took to defending their hats, particularly a group of dock workers who started a large brawl. Oak, Mercer, and Clinton stations took on much of the action of the rioting, but uh, there were some other contributors to slowing it down too. What one particular uh, legend came out of all this, and that's Lieutenant Lenahan. Tried very hard to find a picture of him, could not, but uh, his story essentially does enough. Lieutenant Lenahan would uh, call the boys' parents once they'd found them in the streets rioting, and he would say something to the effect of, yes, I'd like you to come down to the station and spank your boy in front of all these other guys here who he was just rioting with. Yep, that's right, he uh, encouraged parents to come down and spank their children because they'd been rioting, and these were not particularly young boys either. So I guess Lieutenant Lenahan, he knew what he was doing. It's unclear if the protesting involved 1,000 or 10,000, but it's somewhere in there, and that's a lot of people either way. Good news, nobody died in the riot as far as we're aware. Uh, hat sales boosted greatly after the fighting, and many jobs were created as the streets had to be cleaned profusely. I think the moral of the story here is clear. Don't wear your straw hat around September 15th. That's about it. Thanks for no, watching. No, no, no. No, no, no. That's, that's not the moral of the story here. The moral is, uh, is you, you just, you gotta learn to be okay with stuff. You know, people are gonna wear straw hats in winter, and that's fine. It's not a worry. If you worry about it, it's gonna cause a lot more trouble than you're gonna cause good. Uh, kinda-ish unless you create lots of jobs and sell lots of hats. But that's irrelevant. That's the moral. Mm-hmm.